So we've covered the right half of the puzzle, primitive types. Now what we're going to do is turn over to the left half of the walrus mystery, how the walrus behaves by talking about so-called reference types. So we've said there are eight primitive types in Java, byte, short, int, long, etc. Uh, and any other variable you declare, say a planet or a walrus or an int array, is going to be a so-called reference type. Okay? So that's just the term for all of the types that are not these. So let's start digging into our understanding of reference types by discussing object instantiations. So whenever you say new dog or new walrus or new planet or whatever, what Java is going to do is it's going to allocate a box of bits for each instance variable of the class. Here they are listed and fill them with a default value, say zero or null. And then the constructor will then usually fill every box with some other value. Now it doesn't have to, but in this case it will. So let's see an example. So when I run this visualizer here, I will see that uh, walrus, whenever I run the constructor, uh, once, I, once I call new, two boxes are created, one for the weight and one for the tusk size, and they're filled in with a default value of zero. Now the constructor will come through and reset them to some other value in this case, though it doesn't necessarily have to do that. So whenever this code runs, what ends up happening, what the new keyword does for us, is it creates two boxes, one of size 32 bits, one of size 64 bits uh, for a total of 96. So that's what happens when we instantiate an object. Now it's interesting to actually reflect on what happens at the bit level. Now this is a little beyond the scope of the class, but somehow I find it satisfying to know that this is approximately what's going on under the hood. So it's a little bit of a simplification, but in this case, whenever we call new, what Java will do is it will, when I say new walrus, it's gonna dig through memory and it's gonna find 96 bits because that's, now, that's how many it needs to store the walrus. And then it's gonna fill in those, well, the constructor will fill in this top bit with uh, 1,000 and this bottom bit here, the blue bits with 8.3. So this happens to be 8.3. Uh, and on a more physical level, that's a rough picture of what's going on. Now I'm gonna admit this is a bit of a simplification. Uh, the actual size of a walrus will be a little bit bigger than 96 bits because there's various information that's uh, header information or, or, or overhead up here. Uh, but I'm not showing it here because it's just beyond the scope of our class and this is good enough for us, okay? So in other words, what happens is your computer has a few billion bits. It looks through those bits and it somehow decides, yes, this, this is the place where my walrus is gonna live. Here is the weight, here is the tusk size. Uh, and there it goes. So what's interesting about the new keyword is that we can think of it not only as going out to this massive field of bits and finding a home for the information of the walrus, but we can also think of it as reporting where it put the walrus. So if I go to, to the fields and I bury a treasure, I mean, that's great, the treasure's in the field now, but if I ever wanna see that treasure again or some, like, let someone know where it is, I have to report that information that out there in the corner of the field, that's where the treasure is. So what'll happen is that the new keyword, you can think of it as returning the value of, or, or the number of, of, of uh, bit in memory where it put the walrus, okay? So it's very natural, it's a sequence of bits that what new can just do is return, okay, hey, you know where I put that wonderful walrus? I put it in bit number 2,384,723,423. Uh, and that will be the so-called, or you can think of that as the return value of the new keyword. So it goes out there, buries the treasure, and it shouts to the heavens, this is where I've put this treasure, this wonderful walrus. Okay. So what? Well, let's talk a little bit about the declaration of a variable that's a reference type. So before we've been talking about instantiation, how new works, now let's talk about declaration. So if I have a piece of code that declares that a walrus exists, or that a dog exists, or that a planet exists, what Java will do is it will allocate a box of exactly 64 bits, no matter what type of object. It's a reference type. That's just what's going to happen. And then these bits can either be set to null, that is all zeros, or it could be set to the address of a specific instance of that class as returned by new. So let's see a very simple example. If I say walrus sum walrus, and then say sum walrus equals null, well that first line what it does is creates a box of 64 bits, and the second line equals null sets it all equal to zero as a marker to say, well, it's nothing, right? It's null. By contrast, if I say walrus sum walrus, that creates a box of 64 bits, and then say equals new walrus, then what's going to happen is that after new goes out to the field and it digs the hole and puts the delicious, delicious walrus, that's not nice, uh, our lovely walrus in, in the, in the uh, field, and then shouts, 
Here's the location of the walrus. This serves as a record of that information. So if it got put in location 01000011 yada yada, that is going to be what we store in this box. So even though the walrus itself is 96 bits, the address that we store is 64 bits. And it's just a, a, in a modern Java uh, runtime environment, 64 bits is the size of the address. That's how many bits we use to represent this number right here. Okay. Um, so while this notation does give us a fairly accurate picture of what's going on, and again, you know, I kind of fudge things a little bit. And when you go to 61C or even an operating systems class, you'll get a really under, uh, more honest understanding. While this is good enough for our purpose in 61B, it's not particularly instructive to look at this giant stream of bits and expect to know anything. So what I'm going to do is similar to before. We're not going to show explicitly the binary information shown in a, in a memory box. We're going to instead use uh, this simplified box notation. Uh, and in this case, whenever we're talking about uh, reference types, this, this notation will often be called box and pointer. OK, so what is it? Uh, so whenever we have a null, a bunch of zeros, we're just going to write null in the box, because having 64 zeros in a row is just a waste of space. And if we ever have a non-zero address, that is, sorry, that is, if this address is anything other than zeros, then we're going to draw an arrow to whichever object uh, the walrus is pointing at. So instead of uh, showing this right here, this sequence of seemingly random 64 bits, we'll draw an address refer that shows us which walrus we're talking about. So here's our 96-bit walrus, here's our 64-bit box holding the address, and there is a pointer. Hence the name box and pointer notation. You may not realize it, but you now know everything you need to solve the mystery of the walrus. So I mentioned the golden rule of equals, that equals just copies the bits. That's all it does. Now that's true for primitive types, but it actually is also true for reference types. And in fact, for any situation in Java where you say equals. So in terms of our visual metaphor, what that means is we're going to copy the arrow by making, uh, if we say, for example, b equals a, we're going to make the arrow in the b box point at the same instance as a. So let's see that in terms of box and pointer notation. So when I say walrus A, what does that do? Well, that creates a box of 64 bits. There it is. And I've only shown it very small. I mean, I could have made a huge box, but we know it's 64 bits, because look, it says so right there. Now when I say A equals new walrus, the new keyword goes out to memory, finds the bits it needs, the 96 bits, and it shouts the location which A will dutifully record. So this walrus has 96 bits. The new keyword yells the address. We store the address here. And rather than writing out that 64-bit address, we draw an arrow, because that's easier to understand. Next up, we say walrus B. This creates a box, which is 64 bits. So both A and B are 64 bits. And at this point, B is not defined, right? It's not that it's null. Right now, it's just nothing. It's just some box of 64 bits. Who knows what's in there? And when we say B equals A, we're going to copy that string of bits. Remember, there's 64 bits here. If we had the bit picture, it'd just be a string of 64 bits. We'll copy them into this box. And so at that point, when we say B equals A, B is pointing at the same object. So now if we were to try and do something like B dot wait, it's saying, follow the arrow. Go to the walrus. You will find the information you seek. And in that case, you might say B dot wait equals something. So I hope now it's clear why the mystery of the walrus is resolved the way it does. Uh, and that's all you need to know to understand the whole deal.